I wanted a Voron since the first time I saw one. They look great and the lure of the bamboo printers didn't hit the same for me and I maintain that one day I'll get a Voron. I wanted it so much I tried the whole fake it till you make it routine, fitting a stealth bit and a tool head and ERCF to my Neptune 3. Then I got hooked on a gateway drug, the V0. Without further ado, let's get into my ultimate V0. This is my Voron V0.2 R1 Pro, which was built from a Fizet kit that I purchased on AliExpress in February for around £400. The original printer I built was great. I loved the build process and it took me long enough that the finished product gave a great sense of achievement. Fast forward about a day or two and I wanted to start building it better. So I reached out to my good friends at Big3Tech, LDO and E3D, all of which agreed to jump on board with the upgrades I had in mind and sent over a bunch of upgrades. I'd like to give a massive thank you to all three of these companies, as well as some honourable mentions towards the end of the video. So let's get started with the motion and mechanical system. The linear rails provided by Fizet were okay. I'd re-greased them and given them a good chance to prove themselves. But I had a little play on my X-Rail, so LDO to the rescue. They provided me with a complete set of linear rails, which consisted of four LDO branded rails that felt fantastic and one high wind rail that was exactly what I needed for the X-Rail. These rails were a very quick and easy swap. After cleaning and re-greasing with Mobilux EP2, the new rails are as smooth as butter and have zero non-linear movement. I swapped out the belts for genuine Gates belts. I have no reason to question the quality of the original belts provided, but I had enough Gates GT2 6mm belt lay around, so I figured I would upgrade whilst I was in there. And finally, I installed Mechanical X and Y end stop switches. The V0.2 uses sensorless homing on the X and Y, and whilst this worked, I prefer the accuracy and repeatability of the mechanical switches, so I was more than happy to sacrifice a little space and a few extra grams on the tool head to install these switches. Moving on, let's discuss the tool head and hot end. The Fizer kit came with what they call the Sailfish hot end. This is another Bamboo Lab inspired hot end with a Voron style heatsink and mounting solution. I'm sure it would have worked great, but mine had a loose screw, which led to a filament leak and ultimately lots of clogs. So that was removed and replaced with an E3D Obsidian Bamboo Hot End Nozzle. A big thanks to E3D Online for providing that upgrade. The installation was fairly simple, and as the Sailfish was a bamboo clone, the heater and thermistor fit right onto the bamboo heater block. A quick reprint of the hot end adapter, and I was printing with the bamboo E3D Hot End. And this is what I've stayed with since. The flow rates are excellent and it keeps up with anything I've thrown at it brilliantly. But if we're able to melt plastic so quickly, we're going to need a way to feed it into the nozzle and cool it down afterwards. This is where I made another big leap and swapped out the mini stealth burner tool head with its dual 3010 fans for the dragon burner with dual 4010 blower fans from GDS time. This handled the cooling side of things, but the mini stealth burner extruder wasn't going to work anymore. So LDO provided me with the Orbiter 2, a brilliant compact extruder with ample torque to push more plastic than my hot end can handle. The Dragon Burner tool head upgrade is very simple. It fits using the exact same mountings as the original mini stealth burner and is an upgrade I highly recommend doing on any V0. So we're moving smoothly, we have all of the kit needed to melt plastic, but there's one thing holding us back, the electronics. When I finished building the V0, I did a review being very clear about the electronics in the Fizet kit, and whilst I've since learned a few of the issues were self-inflicted, and some would have been rectified with some further tinkering, I still wasn't blown away by the electronics provided. I like the ability to use a touchscreen, I like to run cameras, film time lapses, and quite a lot of other functionality I would have struggled to gain with the original Catalyst board. So I reached out to Big Tree Tech and tasked them with coming up with a solution that would fit in the V0, not distract from the clean aesthetics, and not require too much modification. And they delivered. We started by replacing the original Catalyst 2 board with the Big Tree Tech Manta E3 EZ control board with the CB1 compute module. This allowed us to immediately be able to run a CAN bus tool head with minimal effort. So the tool head board was replaced with an EBB36, providing us with enough ports and a super tight form factor to fit the V0. Mounting perfectly behind the Orbiter 2 and allowing us to run a single umbilical cable to the tool head, 
I printed a new motor blanking plate to pass through the umbilicals in a PG7 cable gland and printed a tool head mount to support the other end of the canvas cable. Big Tree Tech also provided us with the TFT32 SPI touchscreen display and whilst this is a small display it does what it needs to and it works great for a resistive touch touchscreen display. Mounting the display was fairly straightforward and just needed a new skirt housing in printing which I'll link to in the video description. Now we're moving again with much less stepper noise and superior processing power it's time we cooled this thing down. I found this project on the Voron Mods Archive and decided not to go for the overkill solution of a single 120 by 32 blower. Instead, I went for the way overkill solution of two 6028 blower solutions. So I purchased a pair of GDS Time 6028 blower fans and printed the ducting using ABS and they turned out fantastic. The installation was straightforward and I didn't require the addition of any more preloaded M3 nuts. Just nice and simple twister fit locks into the 1515 rails. The wires were then ran within the extrusion, under the mid panel and up to the Manta control board, where they were fitted to individual fan headers to give more control over which fans run at which speed. These push so much across the build surface that it rarely needs more than 50% when printing PLA with a mostly enclosed printer which is a great solution as enclosed printers are notorious for suffering to print PLA without cooling issues. And finally, a few quality of life improvements. I'm not a fan of VOCs, or cancer for that matter. So with my newfound ability to print styrene based filaments such as ABS and ASA, I thought it sensible to install a carbon filter. I originally thought I'd go for a Nevermore filter, however due to the now extremely limited space this was a non-starter. So instead, I found this design on printables. This design takes heavy inspiration from the Nevermore filters and allows me to run activated charcoal filtration within the V0. With the single 5015 blower fan, it's more than enough to filter the small chamber of the V0. And this was fitted with Nevermore carbon pellets. I also added a pair of rainbow on a matchstick LED strips to the top of the enclosure. This provided adequate light to see what's printing and combined with the Clipper LED effects plugin, Lay some cool light shows and status indicators. I also added a pair of modesty panels from Maple Leaf Makers to hide the wire into the control board and give a cleaner aesthetic to the electronics compartment. I want to give an honourable mention to JB3D UK who sent out one of their super high quality PEI sheets when I had an unfortunate incident following the tool head swap. Then on another occasion I flipped over the sheet and had the same incident again. I'll post a link to the JB3D website in the video description. And that's about all there is room for on the V0. It's an incredible little machine and extremely capable of producing super high quality prints at insane speeds. With these supporting mods, it pushes this mobile ant sized printer into the big leagues. And this is my ultimate Volron V0. I'll post links in the video description to the companies and products used in this video, along with affiliate links to individual products. These links cost you nothing to use, but give a tiny commission to me to help support the channel. If you've enjoyed this style of video, please let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss anything. There's a like button if you like this video, and it shows YouTube that you're interested and want to see more like it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.